just when you think you're out, they suck you back in. But sometimes it's not a bad thing. It's a good topic to rehash. So we did a video on piston orientation, right? Last video we did, we used this lineup of 3D3 Mopar pistons to show how they're related, directional notches, chamfers on rods, all of that good stuff. You can go back and watch the video if you haven't seen it. So in the comments, there were several people who asked, well, a couple of them were like, I've heard about flipping pistons. We're putting pistons in upside down. What's up with that? And then some other people asked, are you going to reverse the pistons in this engine? You'll have to wait to the end for the answer to that. So what are they referring to exactly? A few years ago, uh, three or four years ago now, I did a video on reversing piston offset, or basically putting the pistons and installing the pistons backwards so that the directional notch on the piston, instead of facing forward like it's intended, is facing to the back. This caused a lot of controversy. And people who should know better, people who know a lot, okay, and have been around for a long time, and have an idea of, of who I am and my history and all. People who should know better made a really big deal over this. And they called me out on a TV show. These were TV personalities. These people called me out on a TV show saying that the reverse piston, you know, the flipping the pistons, turn them around backwards, was nonsense. That's a fairy tale. There's no power to be made there. This caused uh, uh, lots and lots of uproar. Cost me a couple friends, caused a lot of aggravation. Other people piled in making videos about this, but they piled in on both sides. A couple of people were like, ah, of course, it's nonsense, it's silly old wives' tales, that doesn't make power. And then other people who were very well-respected engine builders that have been around for way, way many decades and have done everything, we're like, yeah, it makes power. We do it all the time. And in fact, when you can't, when, when, when you're dealing with pistons that have no offset in an extreme application racing engine, they will often offset the crankshaft to duplicate the effect of reversing the pistons. So it went back and forth, back and forth. Now, this culminated with a test on a TV show where they took an engine and they put it on a dyno and making no other changes, they pulled the cylinder heads off, they made, they made their runs, pulled the cylinder heads off, dropped the pan, pulled the pistons and rods, flipped them around backwards, dropped them back in, and then tested it. Now, that's good A-B testing, and especially since it's all done the same day on the same dyno by the same people. That's good testing. And what did the test show? <laughs> it didn't show anything. It made no difference at all in the absolute numbers, in the final numbers. What wasn't mentioned is if you really study the graph, the engine with the flipped pistons for a short, brief period did make fractionally more power, but the overall numbers were the same. So, okay, that's it. It's an old wives' tale, right? Well, it's not an old wives' tale, and that test wasn't really representative, and I'll tell you why. I get very specific with this. The test was done on a 360 Magnum. Now the 360 Magnum has a very small piston offset. The piston offset on that engine is only 60 thousandths of an inch. So in other words, for, you've got the, the pin centered and on that engine it's offset 60 thousandths of an inch. So when they flipped it around, the, the total difference was 120 thousandths of an inch. So they moved the pin from one side of the piston to the other side of the piston. It's a very minute amount when it comes to piston offset. On these 3D3 pistons right here, when we measure the offset one side to the other, we find that this is 195 thousandths of an inch offset to one side. Almost 200 thousandths of an inch. So if you flip this around, you change the orientation by 400 thousandths of an inch. That's just shy of a half of an inch, significantly more than the test engine that they had. Now, am I making any of this up as far as like the validity of this? All right, 
I, I says, well, if I'm going to do this video, I had better find the copy of the Direct Connection engine book and show you guys, you know, actually photograph it or, you know, read from it so that you got it right from the horse's mouth. I looked everywhere. I couldn't find it. So I did the next best thing. I consulted the young guru, the person who I consider to be the best Mopar channel in all of YouTube, Jamie over at Dead Dodge Garage. So I threw him a text. I says, hey, Jamie, do you happen to have that paragraph where they talk about flipping pistons, reversing piston offset? Less than a minute later, he responds with this. Turning to the BRB big block section of the Mopar Direct Connection Engine Racing Manual, page 142, paragraph 5, our founding engineers thus stated, Factory pistons have the pin offset to reduce piston slap. By reversing the offset, reversing the piston, engine friction can be reduced. In engines equipped with power pack domed pistons, this can be accomplished by installing pistons from the right bank in the left bank and vice versa. This means the notch in the edge of the piston top will now be towards the rear of the engine. With two barrel flat top pistons, it is only necessary to reverse the piston on the rod and not necessary to swap from bank to bank. Thank you, Jamie. So there you go, right from the horse's mouth, not Jamie's mouth, well yeah, Jamie's mouth, but Jamie's not the horse. The horse would be the Chrysler engineers who actually wrote those paragraphs, those words, way back in 1973, I think it was, 74, they first put those bulletins out. So that's the factory, the guys from the factory, the guys that built and raced these things, telling you, flip the pistons around, and this is how you do it. So, back to the question. Am I going to flip the pistons on this 3D3? I'll answer that this way. I first read those words back in 1978 when I was 16 years old. I was building my first engine for me. And I, I, I absorbed every bit of knowledge I could out of a book. That was literally my Bible. I memorized every word, every paragraph, every, even stuff I, I didn't understand the vast majority of it because it was over my 16 year old head at the time. But I memorized all of it anyway. So I took that part of its heart. And when I put that engine together, I turned the pistons around. All right, now since that time, this is, that's 1978, this is, what is this, 2025? <laughs> it's such a ridiculous amount of time. Since that time, I've built, I don't know how many engines for myself, okay? I, I, I couldn't even guess, honestly. I don't know how many put, engines I've put together for myself, but there have been lots of them. And any time, every time and any time, this, the engine in question had offset pistons, I automatically, without question or pause, installed them backwards. Period. The end. Now, am I saying that you should do this? Not necessarily, because we don't all have the same sensibilities. When I put an engine together for myself, I do not care if it makes any noise. I want it to make a little noise. I come from the day that when you had a quiet car, you know, like with mufflers, and you could hear pistons rattling away, you knew that was a serious car because it had forged pistons and forged pistons slap around on the bores. So I come from the day where a little piston noise means like hardcore, it's music, it's okay, I'll take it. I don't care if an engine uses a little oil. I, I always, I always, all of the engines I built for myself are as loose as I can get away with and still have them seal and function. When I put an engine together for myself, I don't care if it lasts 200,000 miles. If it lasts 50,000 miles and it gives me the performance, the feedback that I want when I'm using it, well, that's fine. This is what I'm after. So we all have different sensibilities. When I put an engine together for myself, I know what I like, not necessarily what other people do. So while every engine I've ever built for myself has had reverse pistons, I've never done it on somebody else's engine. You know, because they may care about noise. They may care about things like resale value and stuff like that. So sensibility, you have to go by sensibility. So you're doing it for somebody else, do it by the book. You're doing it for yourself, you make a judgment call. Do I care if it does this or if it does that? It has to be an educated judgment call. You have to know the liabilities and whether or not you're willing to live with those liabilities. So am I going to put these in there backwards? 
Well, yes, of course I am. Every engine I've built on this channel so far has had pistons and backwards. How do you go about it? For you guys who don't know, all right, this is really simple. So here's the lineup of pistons, and you can see these are oriented as they would be in the engine, okay? One, and this is this number one, this is number two, okay? Now, what we would do in order to keep the orientation of the connecting rod correct is we're gonna take this piston and we're gonna swap it to this hole, okay? And we're gonna turn it around backwards. Now, when we turn these around backwards, our orientation is gonna stay the same. Notice, here's our directional notch on this piston. Then that corresponds with that directional notch. And now that we've set them up like this, our chamfers are still where they're supposed to be. Our flat spots are where they're supposed to be. Our pin oilers are where they're supposed to be. So our orientation of the connecting rods is going to stay exactly the same, but now the offset on the pistons is going to be reversed. This will reduce friction. As far as noise goes, let me tell you something. I've only ever heard the slightest noise on just a couple of engines that I put together over the years. Only the slightest noise and only when it's cold. After they warm up, there's no noise. It's not like that piston just slamming around in the bore. It's nothing like that. It's just, instead of the piston being held tightly to the cylinder wall, it's allowed to float a little more. So if your clearances are reasonable and you're dealing with, a, with, a, with like a cast type of piston that, you know, relatively tight clearances, it's probably not gonna make any noise. So that's the procedure there. Of course, it would be easier if we had pressed pins and we just, you know, just swap the piston, just take the piston off the rod, turn it around and send it, right? But because we have pressed pins, we're going to just turn them around that way. So there's the answer. Yes, I will absolutely be turning the pistons around in that engine. And by the way, what we measured on here, the, uh, the, the 100, 190 thousandths offset is actually small. The 440 and the 400 have over 200 thousandths. All right, so by the time you're done actually turning them around, you're changing the offset by almost half an inch. That is, it's significant as opposed to their test engine, which was only 120 thousandths of an inch. So keep that in mind. Do I have any hard feelings over all of this? No, not really. It was, it was a fun debate. It got a little ugly for a couple of minutes there uh, on, on various live streams and stuff like that. But, you know, it's water under the bridge. These guys, when they, in, in fairness to them, to, to the TV guys, hi, David, hi, Steve. Um, in fairness to them, at the time that they did this, it was when the, the, the whole TV thing was at full blast, okay? Like these guys were on top of the world. They had access to everything under the sun, all good quality stuff, like no shortage of it. You know, oh, of course, put new pistons in. You know, it, nobody ever bothered reusing anything old or anything pedestrian enough to actually have an offset piston. So I can see where at the time that they were doing this, they were kind of jaded. I get it, I understand. Now the TV is gone and everybody is doing YouTube together right now. I almost guarantee they have a slightly different set of sensibilities than they did back then. It's all water under the bridge as far as I'm concerned. Flip the pistons if you think you can live with the potential, you know, side effects. And if you're doing it for somebody else, you know, you say, well, I'll just, I'll just slip this little trick in there and make them happy. Don't do it, right? Make variations when you're working on your own things, experiment on your own stuff. If you're doing it for somebody else, do it by the book. All right, guys, so that's it. I'll see you tomorrow.